Oh, sorry guys, I was just reading the back of a VHS tape. <laughs> um, welcome to Geekborn, and this is the fourth episode in the Barely Relevant series. Similar to the game, The Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon, every film or show that I'm going to be covering is going to be connected by an actor or actress. So we followed the star of the last film uh, that we watched, which was Superman Returns. So we followed Brandon Ralph here to Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, where he plays one of the evil exes that Scott has to defeat during the film. Uh, I've only seen this film one time before uh, watching it here for this, and uh, that's back when it first came out. I saw it in theaters, and I'm really excited to actually go through and revisit this film. I can't believe that I haven't watched it before now. It's kind of ridiculous. So we're going to start off. Uh, the film starts with a pixelated Universal logo, which shows off how much this movie really is. It wants to be a video game. Uh, I talk about it later. It's a merge of a video game and a comic book and a live action film just all together. <laughs> freaking love it um so we're not even five minutes into the film and it's already littered with all kinds of references um we get to see several characters one of them played by anna kendrick who plays the younger sister of scott uh she tries to keep him out of trouble and we learn that he's a 22 year old dating a high schooler scott pilgrim was dating a high schooler a 17 year old little girl little girl you know whatever um Audrey Plaza plays one of his friends, um, and she works literally everywhere. Uh, she's the actress that we're going to be following after this into uh, our next project. I'll let you know at the end of this episode what's going to be on Barely Relevant uh, 5. Um, but we're going to keep going on about the the movie. So we, uh, we see that Scott goes on a date with his girlfriend at the time, Knives, uh, the 17-year-old. They play this really odd DDR ninja type game uh, kind of interesting the the game that they're playing uh, this movie has some really cool and interesting transitions I just love seeing everything just come together this is probably one of my favorite movies and I'm so glad that I got to rewatch it um, rewatching it makes like has re made me realize it's one of my favorite films uh, Scott seems to have this uh, just be oblivious throughout the whole film. You know this one girl with hair like this? Yes, that's Ramona Flowers. He hangs out with Ramona eventually, and she has all the teas. Like, at her house, she just lists all these different types of tea. We have blueberry, raspberry, ginseng, sleepy time, green tea, green tea with lemon, green tea with lemon and honey, liver disaster, ginger with honey, ginger without honey, vanilla almond, white truffle, blueberry chamomile, vanilla walnut, constant comment, and Earl Grey. Um, and the cool thing is, is wherever she moves, the snow just melts at her feet wherever she skates um, at that point uh, but Scott invites her to the battle of the bands that he's a part of she's like you're part of a band he's like yeah we're terrible uh, but we're having this thing uh, but he forgot that he invited his girlfriend so that's kind of awkward with the 17 year old and Ramona both there where he like stayed the night at Ramona's house they didn't do anything we stayed there had some tea this is when X number one Matthew Patel shows up <laughs> We're about 30 minutes into the film. Um, we get to see their dating history, which is really cool. It's in like the same art style as the comic book, um, and very similar to the video game um, based on everything. Uh, we see that Matthew Patel sings. There's a musical number right here. I mean, if you want to fight me, what? Ha, you're not the brightest. There's a battle of the bands, but he just kind of shows up out of nowhere. Scott KOs the dude, though. He turns into coins, and Scott's band, the Sex Bobombs, win. Uh, Scott appears afterwards, looking all kinds of happy. We see some sitcom noises and all kinds of stuff. And his roommate talks about seeing Lucas Lee, which is our foreshadowing for the next Evil X that is going to be on the list. Uh, we see a fake film that Lucas part is in where he dials a payphone with a pistol. Like, he's just using the pistol to push the buttons. It's hilarious. Um, but Scott goes out, um, sees Ramona, goes on a date with her, and then they decide to go to meet up with his roommate, and they find out that Lucas that's where Lucas Lee is at. She finds out Lucas Lee is one of her exes. When Lucas Lee first appears, you hear the Universal theme play, which is pretty hilarious. 
and Chris Evans does an amazing job playing this character. I freaking love it. Um, just seeing him go through this whole thing. Uh, Scott's forced to fight. He fights off of Lucas Lee's whole stunt team, which is like six different guys that look like Lucas Lee. Um, and he eventually goats Lucas into doing a grind down this giant rail, down these like two, three flights of steps. So the movie turns into a Tony Hawk Pro Skater game for a minute. <laughs> Um, and he gains way too much speed and explodes on impact. The Lucas Lee just poof, gone. So, you know, that's one way to defeat him. Um, we're about an hour in, and we get to uh, see Brandon Routh, who plays Todd. Uh, Todd gets annoyed with knives and punches the highlights out of her hair. I mean, he punches this girl so hard, and one of the guys literally says, he punched the highlights out of her hair. You punched the highlights out of her hair. He punched the highlights out of her hair. Um, he's super strong and has special powers because he's a vegan. Um, it gives him mental powers because it allows him to have full access to his brain since he only eats uh, you know, vegetables and whatnot. It's super interesting. Okay. You know how you only use 10% of your brain? That's because the other 90% is filled with curds in the way. Um, also makes him better than everybody because vegans are just better than people and that's why everybody tells each other they're vegans. Short answer, being vegan just makes you better than most people. Uh, they do a pow uh, base battle, doesn't work. Scott loses the base battle, um, but he gets Todd to drink some half and half and that makes the vegan police show up and they take away Todd's powers and now there are three evil exes down and only four more to go. Ramona fights her evil ex girlfriend Roxy. Uh, that's why it's evil exes and not evil ex boyfriends. You and her? It was just a phase. Just a phase? You had a sexy phase? It meant nothing. I didn't think it would count. It meant nothing? I was just a little bi curious. Well, honey, I'm a little bi curious. Uh, she keeps correcting me that and that during the movie. Uh, we get some see some really cool stuff because. Uh, she has her hammer and Roxy has her whip. Gives some cool stuff. But Scott can't, has to fight her. Scott has to fight her. So she, Ramona uses Scott's hands and f fights her off. Um, and there's some really cool choreography that we get to see throughout all these different uh, fight scenes. Especially in this one. I really like this fight scene. Uh, Roxy ends up defeated, of course, some uh, with some help with some awesome visuals. Uh, the next two X's are a set of twins that are. Also competing at the Battle of the Bands. Uh, Caddy and Aggie twins just happen to be the next band in the battle. And they are totally badass. Ramona dated twins. Apparently. At the same time. You know what? I don't know and I don't want to know. Uh, the Sex Bombs get blown away with some awesome, cool animal visuals that they have going on during this, uh, this battle. <laughs> Ramona is with her most recent ex-boyfriend, Gideon, during the battle. Ramona breaks up with Scott as soon as the battle is over and gets back with Gideon. Scott mopes around some, but then gets a call from Gideon. His roommate says that he got to go after her. So Scott gets ready for his fight and Gideon uh, with Gideon. And we get a full scene of Scott tying his shoes. Like there's a seeing him get ready super quick and then we see him for a full minute just tying his shoes which is really interesting because in an earlier scene he literally walks into a room and then comes back out of the room with a completely different shirt so it's just super weird that like one of the most mundane things is something that we focus on um, but Scott goes through to the chaos theater he goes to fight Gideon uh, he pulls out a sword because of love and he kicks a bunch of ass. Knives shows up, kind of saves Scott. She fights off Ramona because Ramona broke Scott's heart. Scott's admit that his wrongdoing, but then Gideon stabs him. So we go through and Scott goes into this in between world, but he picked up a one up earlier and one of the, after his battle with the twins and he finally defeated them. He picks it up and says he's getting a life. So he goes through, and he still has that one up, so he comes back. He has to go through the Chaos Theater level again, but he has a 
double bonus. So he goes through and he realizes that he he fought for Ramona for love, but really he wants to fight Gideon for himself. You want to fight me for her? No. I want to fight you for me. Scott earned the power of self-respect. So he goes through and fights uh, fights Gideon, but he learns during his time in the in-between space that Ramona has a memory chip embedded in her neck and that he, she's literally being controlled by Gideon. She was obsessed with Gideon and Gideon like was kind of into her, but not didn't show it at the time that they were together. So it shows their whole thing. Um, during his battle with Gideon, Gideon gets this cool pixelated blue katana to kind of go against the flaming cool sword that Scott has during his battle. Wrong move, baby. And then Knives jumps in and she helps defeat Gideon, kind of similar to the DDR game that they played earlier, which is kind of interesting, you know, bringing that call back back uh, Gideon complains that it took two hours to get all the information together to put the evil e the League of Evil X's together um, and then Scott straight up defeats him Scott then has to face Nega Scott but Nega Scott's just a cool dude and they talk it out and then they plan to go get brunch so you know that's that's whatever it wasn't even a thing despite the fact that Ramona continues to escape her past that continues to follow her Scott decides that he wants to continue to fight to be with her after fighting all this way to be with her uh, all of her exes uh, she wants to you know leave and not have him to deal with it but he wants to be with her he wants to uh, show her that he you know he cares and he wants to be there despite her past he wants to see the person that she becomes and they want to grow grow as people together um, it's just such an amazing film some amazing choreography uh great acting from so many people some hilarious scenes um like i said great transitions i this is probably like top for me uh like i said one of my favorite films i glad to be able to you know talk about it go back through it with you guys and keeping it barely relevant to the last movie that we went through and it's going to be barely relevant to the next movie we go on to because in the fifth episode of barely relevant we're following audrey plaza as i mentioned and we're not following a movie this time we're going to go back to the first episode we're going to go to on a cartoon journey where audrey plaza plays a character from the legend of Korra. Um, we're gonna just kind of go over and uh, talk about the show in general. Uh, of course, we'll talk about Audrey Plaza's character um, and uh, see where we go on our journey next after the legend of Korra on Barely Relevant. Uh, remember, some of us are just born geeky. You have a great one.